Has Steph Curry's injury ruined the Warriors' playoff chances? Imagine a team's heartbeat going out of sync, all of a sudden like a ship's anchor getting lost at sea. This is the Golden State Warriors without their star player, Steph Curry, who got hurt recently and shocked fans in the NBA as a whole. From the short-term effects to the long-term ones, let's find out if the Warriors can weather the storm and keep their playoff hopes alive, or if Curry's injury has truly dashed their hopes. Without Steph Curry, the Golden State Warriors haven't played very well, and that trend continued on Saturday. Without Curry, the team's chemistry was much worse, even though Jonathan Kaminga has gotten better. Rookies Brandon Pozimski and Trace Jackson Davis have shown potential, and Chris Paul brings a lot of experience. The Warriors depend on him as a key player, and without him, they often look like they have no plan. The Warriors are still having a bad game when they played against the Spurs, who are last place in the league with a 13-50 record. Victor Wambanyama wasn't playing. The Spurs took advantage of their chances and quickly built a 21-point lead at the Chase Center. Their accurate three-point shooting, 51.5%, was a big part of this. Kaminga finally got going in the fourth quarter, when he scored 19 of his 26 points. Klay Thompson scored the most with 27, but it wasn't enough to keep them from losing to the Spurs 126-113. The Warriors, who were 33-30 on the season, lost to the worst team in the Western Conference, which was a big loss. Because Curry was hurt, the Warriors had to try out new teams, which turned out to be harder than they thought. Because Curry usually makes quick, intuitive plays, the team's offense had to rely on Paul and Kaminga, two up-and-coming players, to run more planned plays. This change in approach led to a number of different results. In Steve Kerr's offensive plan, players in the ball move easily, but this team often takes tough shots when they are under a lot of stress. During the game, there were more isolated plays and no pass times that could be seen. The Warriors couldn't play their usual way because the court felt more crowded and there weren't as many three-point threats. The Golden State Warriors' half-court offense didn't work against the San Antonio Spurs' 2-3 zone defense, and it was clear that they were having trouble shooting from beyond the line. The Warriors only scored five points in the first five minutes of the second quarter because they were having trouble scoring. At halftime, they were 19 points behind the Spurs because they couldn't score. In the second quarter, they only got 16 points. Most people don't think of San Antonio's defense as strong because it ranks 24th in defensive rating. The Spurs' defensive group was already thin because star rookie and paint defense expert Victor Wambanyama was hurt. Jetty Osman and Devin Vassell were also hurt and couldn't play. What the Warriors didn't expect was how hard this defense would be to get through. Even though Klay Thompson said earlier in the week that the team could do well without Curry by building on their past wins, they didn't show up to practice. Players like Curry have been hard for the Warriors to play without this season, as shown by their 0-3 record in games without him. This includes a loss to the Chicago Bulls after Curry left because of an ankle injury. The team had a 15-50 record, while Curry was mostly absent during the 2019-2020 season, which was similar to how badly they did the previous year. There was something wrong with the Warriors' defense, even if it wasn't because Curry wasn't there. The Warriors' chances of making a comeback were ruined when Julian Champagne made an open corner three-pointer during a half transition because of a mistake on defense. The Golden State Warriors changed their strategy to start the second half. They played with a smarter lineup, with Klay Thompson in the middle to create more space and Draymond Green in the middle to give them more movement. The Warriors started the third quarter on fire with a 16-8 run, which made it look like the change was paying off right away. This made a comeback possible. It paid off for Golden State's offense as they scored 36 points on their own in the third quarter. But this attacking surge came at a cost for defense. It looked like the Spurs could match any three-pointer that Thompson or Jackson Davis made, even the batting practice threes. Amazingly, San Antonio's lead grew to 17 points after three quarters because they made 61.5% of their three-point attempts, even though they usually have trouble from beyond the line. Jonathan Kaminga had a quiet game until the first four minutes of the fourth quarter when he scored 11 points and never looked back. He played aggressively with less than four minutes left in the game, which gave Golden State a boost. His amazing move during the break helped cut San Antonio's lead to 13 points. Even with Kaminga's best efforts and a last-ditch full-court press and fouling strategy, the Warriors weren't able to turn the game around. Without Curry, the Warriors were lost in a maze of hopelessness as they played the Spurs, who had one of the league's weaker teams and were missing key players but still held on to the lead. 
A few days later, Chris Paul's play helped them get back in control. But the way things are going now, this probably won't be enough to keep the Warriors from losing again to the Mavericks. The Golden State Warriors are in a very important part of their season right now. They only have 17 games left, and only seven of them are at home. The team will play the Los Angeles Lakers, who are just below them in the standings, and the Dallas Mavericks, who are currently in a slight lead. Both of these teams are directly fighting for a spot in the playoffs. If Steph Curry's injury isn't too bad, the Warriors should be able to keep up the same level of intensity they showed last year when he was down with a knee injury. The team hopes that Curry can get better quickly and play his best before the end of the regular season on April 14th. The Warriors still need to win two games in the playing round in order to get into the main playoff draw. Even though this guess is the bright side, in a strange way, this situation shows the effects that aren't good, which shows what a fine line the Warriors are walking this season. Beyond the problems they're having right now, there's a bigger worry about the Warriors' future. It's clear that the team's owners don't want to pay the league's luxury tax next season because they already have a lot of bills to pay. The Warriors have paid $185.2 million in luxury taxes this season, and it's not clear if they will be able to keep up that level of spending if they don't make the play-in game. The team is currently $2.6 million over the luxury tax level. It's getting harder to make financial moves because key players like Klay Thompson, Chris Paul, and Gary Payton II's salaries for next season are likely to be off-kilter. If Payton chose to use his $9.1 million player option, the Warriors would have to pay more in wages. They might still go over the second luxury tax rate, even if they sign Thompson for half of what he makes right now and hope Paul doesn't leave for free agency. At this point in the season, the last few games were supposed to answer an important question that now hangs over everyone's head. Is this team valuable enough to justify the huge financial and strategic investment needed to bring everyone back for another chance? Following some early losses, the Golden State Warriors reached a turning point in the season. The final weeks would decide whether they were ready to compete in the Western Conference or not. But these plans fall through because Steph Curry isn't there. No matter how short-term his loss is, it has a huge effect on the team's short- and long-term goals, as well as on the games that are happening right now. In a league where superstars hold the most power, Curry's influence goes beyond his play on the court. He is the Warriors' most important player and defines their personality and success, and his influence goes far beyond the court. His leaving will make the team's flaws stand out more, which will finally lead to chaos. It shows how much Curry has affected the Warriors, a team that is built around his unmatched skills and leadership. When Curry comes back, he will be asked to do what he does best, bring order out of the chaos. He might have time to get the Warriors back on track, save the season, and show the team and its fans that putting money back into the core group is a good idea. The Warriors and Curry in particular have a short amount of time to show that they can solve problems and become NBA contenders in a high-stakes setting. So that's all the time we had today, folks. Hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon on your way out. See you all next time.